Morning, happy Tuesday. It is June the 6th at 5 30. I'm Caitlin Heck here with Wanye Reese and meteorologist Alex Forbes. Just stepping out the door this morning, I was locking the door and I had to do somewhat of a double take because I was like, it feels a little cooler out. And then as right. I was driving, I saw the raindrops on the windshield already. So I was like, oh, okay. Yep. It, it's going to be one of those days, yep. Alex. It is. It's a little cooler outside this morning, but we still have the humidity out there. So it's uh, Take a little, give a little, right? In terms of what we're seeing across central Georgia, there's the radar right now. Not seeing anything at the moment here in central Georgia. Some showers over into South Carolina this morning, and that is about it. Waking up to 62 in Macon, 64 in Warner Robins, 64 in Eastman and in Forsyth, 65 waking up in Roberta. How about 66 in Gordon and in Milledgeville, 65 in Sandersville, and 64 down in Sumter County this morning across the state. Much of the same, just a giant mix of 60s, 69 in Rome, 62 in Blue Ridge, and 68 down in Brunswick and really for the most part across the southeast it's much of the same you've got to go up into the Appalachian Mountains up into Kentucky Virginia West Virginia to find any of the cooler weather now hour by hour today we are going to warm up and waste no time doing it into the 80s by 11 a.m. 85 or so by that noon hour 92 is what we're going to do for a high temperature today with more radar activity than we saw yesterday isolated storms they're going to be in and around central Georgia winds out of the west southwest at about 5 to 10 miles an hour but we've got temperatures back in the 90s obviously beginning today and lasting for the next several days. I'll show you the details on that in the so-called cold front on Thursday coming your way here in just a moment. Thank you, Alex. We have continuing coverage this morning. Forsyth police are looking for the man responsible for Saturday night shooting at a graduation party. The police department says three teens got shot, including a Mary Persons football player, 16 year old DJ Walton and two 19 year olds, one from Macon and the other from Jackson. The police department says 300 people or more were at a block party on Millage Circle. They were celebrating two married persons graduates. Sergeant Terrence Thomas says two groups got into an argument. He says at least three men pulled out guns and started shooting. Thomas says investigators collected roughly 17 rounds there. Well, it's very upsetting, um, you know, have a group of kids that, you know, a milestone in their life, you know, everything going well. A party that started earlier that day, you know, everybody was enjoying themselves. And it's just a shame that something like this happened. The police department says all three victims thankfully are expected to recover. The search continues this morning for a man accused of shooting a person at a gas pump in Eatonton. Police Chief Howell Cardwell says a shooting happened Sunday at 5 p.m. at the Shell gas station on Sumter Street. Witnesses said Lawan Evans shot and killed 32 year old Frederick Lamar Scott Jr. After an argument, Scott got hit once in the chest. Evans faces a murder charge. Chief Cardwell says anyone who knows where Evans is should call him at 478. 288-3386. That number again for you, it's 478-288-3386. Also under investigation, damage to part of Rosehill Cemetery's College Street entrance. The Bibb Sheriff's Office is looking for a black pickup truck with an enclosure on the back that was spotted there. Bibb County is still in the process of checking to see if any nearby businesses caught anything on camera. They're also still working to see if the arch can be saved and if so, how much that will cost. As the city grows, it has to build more infrastructure, right? And last night, Warner Robins pushed ahead in its efforts to expand its water and sewer systems. The council agreed for the nearly $200,000 purchase of water lines. These will be used to attach areas around the new water plant and tower site, which they hope to have up and running soon. It's a very significant um, plant for us, the water plant. Warner Robins started planning and designing construction on the new water tower and plant a few years ago. They officially broke ground off of Highway 41 on Crestview Church Road two summers ago. But Monday night's council brings the project one step closer to completion. The new plant would service areas along Russell Parkway, Vietnam Veterans Memorial Parkway, Watson Boulevard, and the joint development area between Houston and Peach County. For the last two summers, the city has been working on building the infrastructure so they can supply water to residents in those areas. They hope to rely less on the county water system, who the city now buys from in bulk. But the ultimate goal is, if it's city territory, we offer 100% of the resources, 100% of the utility. Monty Walters with the City Utilities Department says adding these last purchase lines was always a part of their plan, but it was not drawn up in their original design. Walter says he expects the tower and plant to be operational around September of this year. Well, starting today, you'll need to find a detour around a Fort Valley Railroad crossing. The crossing at Church Street and US 341, also known as Oakland Heights Parkway, is closed today and tomorrow for maintenance. The Georgia Department of Transportation says signs will direct you around the crossing. They ask that you just slow down in that area. 
The Atlanta Journal-Constitution is reporting two federal lawsuits filed against Macon's Mercer University allege a data breach from this year impacted more than 93,000 people. In May, the university said it launched an investigation with the help of law enforcement, legal and technical consultants. The university said it was notifying affected members of the school community, which included students and employees. Both lawsuits seek a jury trial and damages. Well, we are learning new information out of Washington County. The county's Board of Education voted to release Superintendent Dickie Edmond from his contract. The board made its decision on a May 8th scheduled meeting. The board thanked Edmond for his dedication during his tenure. His term officially wraps up at the end of his contract on June 30th. Bulldozers are back at the Carolyn Creighton Park softball fields after things were quiet out there for months. Work started about a year and a half ago to renovate the fields, but it stalled leaving tall weeds and uneven ground. County commissioners signed off on the $1.5 million SPLOSS project in 2020. It was only supposed to take 8 to 10 months. Parks and Recreation Director Robert Walker says expanding each field caused some delays. They needed to reroute underground power lines, so the complex sat empty for months as overgrown weeds took over. That changed this spring. You see here when the electricity work was complete. Now Walker says they're moving forward with some big plans. We hope to be through with this uh, by the end of July. Uh, and then be up and running for a spring season with uh, with softball. Walker says they plan to start registration for that new softball league in February. They hope to have the first game in April. The county plans to bring back some of the big softball tournaments they used to host at the park. Mayor Lester Miller says they already have tournaments with hundreds of teams asking to come and play. Well, happening today, you can celebrate the life of Frankie Lewis. Her work enriched the lives of kids across Macon. Lewis's accomplishments include years of work at Bruce Elementary School, directing the Children's Choir for the Cherry Blossom Festival, and starting the South Macon Arts Revitalization Technology Group. Macon Bib Commission approved the dedication of a South Macon Park after Lewis died in July of 2019. Lewis is responsible for the park even being available to kids. She's known for stressing the importance of inclusion and valuing all people. The ribbon cutting ceremony for Frankie E. Lewis happens at 10 a.m. at 834 Linmore Avenue. Ah, I love that story. So it's 537. Relief is on the way for several frequently blocked railroad crossings in Georgia, but that's not going to help out people in Monroe County. The county is not mentioned in the latest rounds of improvement projects that are part of a transportation grant. Senators Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff announced $3.2 million is on the way for projects aimed at improving mobility. That includes projects in Chatham and DeKalb counties designed to move or redesign crossings that are often blocked. It also includes money to study solutions for crossings in Gwinnett County as well. It comes after Senator Ossoff launched an inquiry into dozens of block rural crossings across the state. Well, it is a wake up call for Georgia's young people called Live Before You Die. The Community Council of Metro Atlanta presented the display over the weekend, hoping to show teens what can happen when you choose a violent path. Turn on the television and look at your news station. If you surf the internet, if you pick up a newspaper, you will see that our young people are dying at alarming rates. The fourth Live Before You Die Summit was a somber event at the MLK Junior International Chapel. Attendees gathered in the chapel auditorium for a mock funeral, complete with singing, a casket and name reading. CCMA Chairman Evan Toulon says the imagery is designed to get the attention of young people and their families. People there also talked about their experiences with drugs, gun violence and gangs, and possible solutions. If we sit down and do nothing, what will happen? If we think that what we can do won't make a difference, what will happen? Well, Apple just announced its newest creation. Next at five, the next steps into virtual reality. And a hunt across making could lead you to a beach trip. Yes, how you and your family can get involved. That is all coming up in a few minutes. First, though, the time is 539. We've got to talk about these showers for today. I left my rain jacket at home and I'm all already uh, regretting that. Exactly. Thankfully, I've learned. I've been here in Central Georgia long enough where there is an umbrella in the back of my car because Always. I've got caught in one too many storms, <laughs> Alex. That's right. And the good news is I think we'll be okay through that 1230 hours. Great. So it's really going to be after one, two o'clock mm -hmm. that really the showers and storms are going to begin to settle into Central Georgia. So of course, we'll be keeping an eye on the radar this afternoon, this morning, keeping an eye on the sky cam because I have a feeling we've got a great sunrise on the way. You can already see first light in the sky there in Dublin. It's a cool 
cool morning, albeit humid across parts of the area. We're looking at a dry radar picture at the moment and expecting that to change later today. In Dublin this morning, 63 the current temperature. Same for Macon, 64 over in Warner Robins, 64 in Montezuma, 65 in Roberta for Scythe, 64 in Monticello, 62 to get your morning started in Bleckley County, 64 over in Wrightsville, and 67 here in Sparta this morning. Some showers and storms up on the north side of Metro Atlanta. Those are trying to slide down to the south. Otherwise, across the southeast, a mainly dry morning by summertime standards. Once we work our way into the afternoon, expecting to see some changes with that. So here we go into future view. There's the 8 a.m. hour, perhaps one or two sprinkles over near Hancock and Washington counties. And then once we get later into the afternoon, you're going to notice more showers and storms beginning to fire up across central Georgia. And it's going to be one of those days where it could literally be pouring down the street from you, but then dry where you are. I think they're going to be very isolated in nature, but also we're going to see lightning strikes outside of where it's raining. So if you are hearing thunder, you are close enough to be struck by lightning. Yes, one of those days, uh, the showers and storms continuing there into the seven o'clock hour. Here we go to about 11 p.m. Any activity we see fading away. As for tomorrow, something similar, about a 30% chance of rain. Once again, temperatures able to find their way into the 90s before we cool down into the 60s to get your Thursday started. And Thursday is the arrival of a cold front. Some showers and storms out ahead of it, then behind it, some drier air building in across central Georgia. Now, those showers and storms out ahead of it, the Storm Prediction Center has outlined much of our area from Sandersville over to Macon and Thomaston points to the south and a level one risk for strong storms there on Thursday. Of course, we'll be keeping an eye on it as of now. I'm not too concerned about it. Off we go into the weekend. The drier weather will prevail. There's Friday. I kept about a 10% chance of rain there on the radar or on the seven day forecast there. Something similar there for Saturday before we get the system approaching on Sunday, which is going to up our rain chances there. So between now and then looking at humid conditions today and tomorrow before we begin to dry out into the weekend. And as we get into the day ahead, beginning to warm up 60s this morning, 70s later on this morning, 80s by that 11 a.m. hour. 92 going to be the high temperature today with those isolated storms on the radar. And we're going to expect to see more activity today than we saw yesterday. Also, the Macon Bacon, they're back at Luther Williams Field tonight. Look for a temperature near 90 right around 6 p.m. First pitch is at 7, cooling down through the 80s tonight over there at the Skillet. Seven-day forecast, upper 80s, low 90s, 30 to 40 percent chance of rain through Thursday. Drier weather prevails beginning on Friday. And then, yep, riding through the mid-90s Saturday and Sunday with the better rain chance on Sunday.